Hi there, welcome to another Gig Beat video. This is just going to be a short video to go through this Land Rover Series 1 motor. It belongs to my friend Jamie and his 1956 Land Rover Series 1 107 pickup. It has been rebuilt and refreshed over the last year and will be heading back home probably this weekend. These are fairly straightforward motors but as there isn't a lot of information available about them online, I thought I would do a short video. This is a later Series 1 motor, so 2 liter, not uh, 1.6. And this is what they call the spread bore motor, uh, where the bores were separated a bit to allow water jackets uh, in between them. So a later Series 1 motor. Cast iron block, cast iron head, and it's an F head motor meaning that while the intake valves are overhead like you would expect in a modern motor, the exhaust valves are in the block facing upward like a flathead motor. So there's a single cam running a set of rockers to work the upwards facing exhaust valves, another set of rockers to work push rods up to the cylinder head, and then another set of rockers to work the downward facing intake valves. Otherwise pretty standard motor. A double row timing chain in the front, individual intake and exhaust ports, cam driven distributor. It's a three main bearing crank and the connecting rod big ends are uh, too big to go through the cylinders so assembly is a little tricky where you slide the connecting rod up into uh, into little cutouts in the block which raises it up high enough to assemble the pistons onto the con rods uh, from above and then push them down towards the crank. The rebuild on this was not difficult it was in good shape uh, despite sitting for quite a long time. Uh, it remains now on standard bore and standard uh, bearing sizes. So really just took a bunch of cleanup. All the bearings were replaced. Mains, uh, connecting rods, cam bearings. Uh, it had one valve, uh, intake valve with a big chip out of it. So that needed to be replaced. Everything else was uh, just lapped in without difficulty. Two of the rockers had seized adjusters in them. One I was able to rescue, but one I had to uh, replace. These motors are all British standard fine threads, so that is something to watch for. The timing marks for this motor are on the flywheel, accessible via this little plate here. There are not timing marks for the cam chain, so it's a bit of a hassle to get it set using the point of maximum valve open as one of the setting points. And that's pretty much it. I'm still waiting for the generator to come back from the shop where I'm having it rebuilt. And I guess next up will be to get the carburetor done. But other than that, it's basically ready to go. Mind you, the truck that it's going into has quite a long way to go yet, so this will sit for a while. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.